Welcome to the continued podcast adventures of Superhero Speak. But I think many of the people that love this character and that love superheroes in general have used these stories as inspiration to say, you know what, I'm going to do something good in the world. I'm going to make a difference like my hero when I was a kid. That is my fondest memory of it because when, you, when you're doing comic books, you want them to affect people. Right. You want people to care. You want, you want to strike emotions. And I knew that that clone saga was striking a lot of emotion. Can you yep. imagine uh, Pulp Fiction starring Goofy and uh, Mickey Mouse? I can totally imagine that. <laughs> I'm no sure one. somebody's written that one too. Pounder with cheese and France, Mickey. <laughs> what? <laughs> Boy, <laughs> ale with cheese, Mickey. Yeah. <laughs> I can totally. See? I, I, would, I would watch the hell out of that movie. Yes, I gladly saw, sacrifice that my, my progeny to you, a mighty Marvel beast. <laughs> <laughs> But Neil Adams is somewhere going, mm, it's, it's my time. Uh, <laughs> How do you measure success? Hey, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Speak. I am your very hired, I am your very tired host, Dave. <laughs> and I am your very zombified John. And no JD. Yes, it's been a week, people. JD is not with us this week because... We're recording really late, so this episode will be going out a little late. Yeah, we're it's, recording it's Tuesday. Tuesday. Normally, we re- we record on Sunday, and so, but so yeah, were, so yeah. Well, I got home from New York on Sunday, but JD said, "Oh, since we have off on Monday, can we record Monday instead?" And I'm like, "Well, I didn't have off, but he did." So I was like, "Sure, why not?" I figured we I could used rest. to do that though. We used to do it on Mondays. Yeah, I know. I figured I could rest then. So. The, something happened i'll get to in a minute so we couldn't record last night so here we are tuesday but john jd is not free he has family obligations to take care of so mm. we're gonna soldier on and uh, and have some little fun just the two of us and besides we're gonna just talk i'm gonna talk about new york stuff and the little bit of news that came out of there and then we've got some interviews for you so you know it'll be a good show it'll be a good show i promise but before I get to my craziness, how are you, John? What's new with you? Brains? No, I mean, I wasn't kidding about the zombification thing. Like, I had, I don't know, everybody's had one of those nights where you like, you're just about to fall asleep, and then your legs get restless. And then, and then you start sneezing. And then, like, your eyes won't just stay closed. And then, I, and that went on until 5 a.m. And so I am, I, you know took off from work because there's no way you can work like that i was tasting colors for crying out loud (laughs) and so yeah otherwise yeah it's it's been okay you know my 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 nephew got we we got my nephew up and running with the code for the the minecraft mod he's he's looking at making new items now we're probably we're gonna start working on blocks uh next this coming weekend and maybe maybe animated blocks too and uh, you know start start putting together a theme for the whole thing did you so, see the link I sent you about Doom? You sent me a lot of links, my friend, and I'm normally like not really, you know. Well, this was in it. this was in Discord. Oh, Apparently, Discord. somebody got Doom to run through oh, Notepad. That's no, <laughs> dude. They made they made a Game Boy, a working Game Boy in Minecraft, like. Seriously, yeah. they played like Super Mario Three in Minecraft. Do you know how, oh, how many how many redstone that. transistors you had to you had to create in the, like I, I just people are people do stupid things and and for those of you that aren't up on technical history, this is not a new thing. Like there is, I don't know if it's still in there, but like when Microsoft Excel first came out, there was a full flight simulator built into it. You can yeah. you can actually look this up and there if it's still in there there's probably a key combination you use when you open up a new Excel works spreadsheet and you there's a flight simulator they, they might have taken it out by now it's like they lost their sense of humor about 5 minutes after they formed the company but <laughs> uh, but anyway yeah i mean this people doing weird weird stuff like that especially now that raspberry pis exist you know where True. people just create entire emulators for like Intellivision or the Commodore 64 just so they can die of dysentery uh, and and <laughs> people Oregon trail right right Pe- people who get there is very old game people will get that joke if you're really really old 
but yeah, I mean, it doesn't surprise me at all. No, I mean, hey, notepads like useless for anything else. That is true. And anybody who wants to take notes on Microsoft, they use Notetab plus plus, you know, or right. or something else, or Site, or I think they got rid of Atom. But yeah, they use anything else. Like Notepad is just it's it's worse than an appendix. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this is true. Oh my goodness, yeah. So that's it. That's how you're doing. Nothing else. Not really. No. Nothing, nothing else working on some actually, well, at work, I'm working on something really interesting that may become, that might spawn two open source projects. Back but, but if I were to explain it any further than that, I would bore the hell out of our audience. <laughs> we may so, have done that already. <laughs> well, you know, just, just my voice alone is usually enough. So, yeah. Hmm. So, so what happened to your battery? Okay. So yes, so. explain. We got, to, so for those who have been paying attention, I just got back from New York Comic Con. And so this is why we're recording late. Oh, I'll, so I'll start at the end. We get home Sunday. Is this going to be like you're going to start at the end and you're going to do five hours earlier? Yes. It's like, damn uh, it. Such an overused trope. So we got home on Sunday. It was me, my son, and, and my girlfriend, Karen. We went to the, the convention. I took the tr- She came here, parked her car here. We took the train to New York and brought the train home. We get here. It was a long day of traveling. She was a little stressed out already. She wanted to get home and see her boys. She gets in the car and it won't start. The battery died while we were in New York. So bollocks. She kind of she kind of got a little up emotional about it over a battery. I don't know why. Well, <laughs> I mean, with the way things are going these these days, like even a little something like that is enough to set anyone off. So she it, was it would pretty much set me off. So 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 she's like, I just want to get home. Can you call me an Uber? So she called her an Uber. She she got home okay. And then yesterday was I was going to work, but then decided to take the day off. Like I had put the day in because a lot of times at the con you don't want to work. I decided to keep the vacation day. I went over to AutoZone. And bought a battery for a car. So just went and said, here's the make a model. They gave me a, a battery, which is only a few blocks from my house. So it's not like I had to go far. I bring the battery back to my house. I don't have the keys. So I can't change the, ba- I can't pop the hood to change the battery for her. Whoopsies. So Breaking she came over. So she, so she's like, well, I'll come over. We'll take care of it. Right. So she came over and lo and behold, <laughs> it was the wrong battery. <laughs> it was too wide to fit where it has to go in the, in the, in the car so we had to take it back to AutoZone, replace it for the right battery but by the time we got back to my house and got it in it was like well actually by the time we realized it was the wrong size battery i'm like there is no way <laughs> we're going to record tonight you know and it was and this thing is too she's like oh well i can just go home and i'm like no like we've got this far we got the old battery out it's <laughs> just a few blocks let's get this taken care of so long story short too late got the battery in and everything's fine. She was able to go to work today. And modern cars suck. So here's a good Christmas gift idea for anybody listening. There are these lithium ion uh, battery packs that you can buy jump starters. Um, yeah, but they're like 240 bucks, I think, aren't they? No, they're like 70 bucks nowadays. I mean, oh, a really I was ex- looking at. I was thinking about getting her one, but the ones I was looking at, they were like, oh no, there, there's $20. like, there's, there's a, a lot of them now. Like I, I got a tech life one. I don't know that tech life even exists anymore. They got the, I think they got bought out, but there are others that like they'll, they'll pump out so, 2000 amps and <clears> start like, a, they'll, they'll start a Ram, you know, Ram pickup or something. And they, it, I just, I just had to use mine a couple of days ago. So I will, really I will neat. tell you this, and this is for anyone listening who has a modern car especially this was a this is a 2020 chrysler pacifica most modern cars you know they have that start stop feature auto start auto stop like your engine shuts off when you're at a red light so you're not idling and then it'll turn back on it's a you know the fuel saver never saw that they don't have those on subarus that's what i've got okay well a lot of a lot of chryslers have this feature and so (laughs) i talked to my brother-in-law who's a mechanic and basically since she got the car, there's she's had a, a warning light about that system on her car. And she talked to the dealership and they gave her a runaround about it. So she finally gave up on trying to get it fixed. 
But basically what happens is this, there's a secondary battery in the car, a smaller battery, which its main thing is that system. So if that battery is dying or dead, it just drains everything from your main battery. And that the smaller battery is also supposed to run like your sensors and stuff, you know, when you, like your doors open and whatnot. So it takes so much juice to start your car that if your battery is a little low, your car won't start, even if everything else is, seems like it's running fine. So I'm I'm glad that everybody's tuned into Car Talk. So uh, so today. basically, long story with, short, he uh, said, "With me, click and him clack." <laughs> long story short, he. I'm just saying this for people to know. Like, if you're in a situation like that, the best thing is just to replace the main battery and then replace the smaller battery later. But like, because if you try to jump it, it it, it shortens the life of the battery. So so first off, that auto start stop thing sounds like a really stupid idea. This did like a lot of cars I, have it though. Uh, yeah, the American cars tend to pack in a whole bunch of stuff that isn't really tested yet. It's and, been around and for years, I, though. Yeah, but like I, I, I would that would be fine on an electric car, but on a on a on a regular like you know gas powered engines, I don't know. But again, here's another Christmas gift idea: the Blue Driver Bluetooth Pro OBD2 scan tool. If you don't want to get taken by your garage oh, yeah. people, you yes. plug this in. There's an OBD port on any on every car, uh, on any basically. car. You plug this in. There's a phone app, and you just you just it'll tell you what all of the all of the alerts mean, and usually give you things that you can do, and that way you don't have to rely on on somebody that you're paying to tell you. Oh yeah, no, this means that you need a full engine or something. Yeah. A full engine. <laughs> no, well, you know, I've I've heard lots of horror stories of people getting taken by, you know, I they they even even going to one of the big dealerships and the and the dealership yeah. would be like, oh yeah, no, you need a new alternator or something. And they didn't need a new alternator. Or, it's or like my, all, all they need to do was hit the button to to remove the alert. One of my so, favorites was on Seinfeld. It's like they can say you can need a new Johnson rod. Yeah, yeah Johnson yeah, yeah. rod. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But 80, 80 bucks, you know, yeah. you just you just sock it away. And then like, you know, any of your cars has, you know, any kind of alert whatsoever, you just plug the, that sucker in and you and you're and you you can you basically you can walk into the garage and tell so them what to do. I had a my my brother had an issue with an older car of his where he kept getting I think it was the gas tank sensor kept going off. And here it was the sensor was bad, you know. He took it to to one mechanic who like wanted to like like a fuel mix sensor or something or i think it was and they wanted to to change like his fuel system out or something and that was going to be you know thousands of dollars like, let me take it to another mechanic and find out what's going on and the, the other mechanic looked at it and said oh this model the sensor goes all the time you replace the sensor and it was fine after that it was just like yeah so you got to be careful like because there are mechanics that are going to just look at what this readout says and says okay you've got to replace your engine you know and like but enough so, car so talk. again, thanks for coming to uh, Car Talk. Our I, accounts payable administrator. I know the checks. Our appeal specialist, Bud Urona. Bud um, Urona? <laughs> our critic, Philistine. Our limo driver, pick up, pick up and drop off. So uh, the big thing I did, of course, is I went to New York Comic Con this year. Our bean counter, edamame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so lot to unpack still basically but it was good it was good it definitely felt like it was back pretty much full capacity this year some of the vendor i mean some of the publishers still didn't have tables but dc didn't have a table at san diego either so i don't know what's going on with them dark horse didn't well, have we, a table we know what's going on with dc this year at least <laughs> well i mean we don't know exactly but we know that like things are things are messed up <laughs> yeah dark horse didn't have a, a booth or idw so but todd mcfarlane was there i mean not idw uh, image but image todd mcfarlane and uh, and eric larson were there but image themselves didn't i know zenoscope was there and they're yes. like they they were like what is it i mean i haven't been there in three years and next year i'm going next next year i'm starting back up on the circuit with you so uh, there's that but uh, yeah like yeah, even zenoscope, the five, marvel idw the, the five years that we were there there weren't like a lot of really huge things going on this year they had marty mcfly and yes Ooh. so there is so so I'll t let me start off the first thing that warner brothers invited us as a as a a, a podcast 
to the premiere of Mortal Kombat Legends Snowblind. That was on Wednesday night, so it was even before the convention started. Did, um, did you know, because I heard that some people were just invited to a screening and didn't know what it was until they walked in. No, no, no. We we, we knew what it was going in. This was, I can't think of the PR guy from, from Warner Brothers, who we deal with every time we go to New York Comic Con. He set the whole thing up. Like, he even recognized me. He's like, super something. I'm like, superhero speak, so. And it was okay. Full review on the website, by the way. <laughs> Go to awesome superheroespack.com so you can see. I did the review Wednesday night after I saw the movie. We got back to the hotel. And, but yeah, like, so they premiered some trailers this year. They showed, they also showed, there's another Warner Brothers animated movie coming out, Battle of the Super Sons. So yeah. it's Damian Wayne against Jonathan Kent. They showed Super Werewolf War- by Night there too. Yep. They showed yeah. Werewolf by Night. I believe that I heard, and I, I what was the other one that they showed? Shoot. Yeah, there was, they showed a trailer for the final episode. They premiered it there of Ring of Power, where they reveal Sauron uh, in the trailer. So Sauron uh-huh. doesn't show up to the last episode. And, oh, the Wednesday Adam tra- trailer, the Mario, the big one was the Mario Brother panel, when they finally revealed the trailer for that. Okay, how much hate did you, I've, I've heard a lot about that. How much hate was there for? Chris Pratt? Yes especially when they have the original voice actor for all of the games who everybody whose voice everybody knows who could have done the voice for this and they went with Chris Pat Pratt who you know is not going to do a convincing Italian accent he on top of like that just well, he didn't he doesn't really do it's not an Italian like, person I know. from Italy accent it's more like a Brooklyn New York accent that he's doing and you can only hear like he only says two lines in the trailer, not not even full lot like just a couple words here and there. So yeah, I saw the trailer, and and I mean I get that they want big names to to pull people to this, but like you know there are certain things that you don't want to do. And right now, voice actors are getting the shaft, right? Like you had yeah. so- Sony went ahead and rearranged all of Crunchyroll's. Was it the 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 dubs that they're doing the English mm-hmm. dubs? They rearranged all the contracts so that they won't work with the uh, with the unions anymore, which people are really pissed about. And now, you know, and then they the studios do stuff like this, where they've got perfectly good voice actors whose voices are well known, who've done the characters before, and they just say, "Nah, we're gonna hire this big, you know, star, and you know, so cost an extra twenty million on our budget." Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I mean it. it We'll, we'll get to the trailer too because I, you can see the tone they're going for. I understand like they want to get butts and seats, but I think the, the property itself is what's going to bring people, not who's doing the voices, especially if it's a good script. Who cares? You voices know. can make or break something though. You yeah, know? sometimes. Yes. And of course, the big moment was the reunion between Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd on. So this is the other thing I wanted to say. And, and were you there for that? No. Oh, How did you miss it? That was on that was on Sunday. Oh, it was a, oh yeah, 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 Sunday. And you were on your way home on Sunday. Yeah. But or was it Saturday? It might have been Saturday. I don't Michael J. Fox doesn't do a whole lot of press no. nowadays because he's no. he's his oh, it was right? in I was in the autograph area when he showed up. Oh my god. He, that must have been amazing. The 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 place exploded when he walked in the room. But that's the thing I wanted to say too. So everyone knows San Diego Comic Con has Hall H. It's that giant hall where they do all the big announcements because it's big enough to hold a lot of people. And it's one of the things that kind of held New York Comic Con back because they didn't have a big hall. Mm-hmm. Well, they now have the Empire stage. So oh, oh so that the new additions are finished? The new additions done. Whoa. That and, must be a lot more space now. So, yeah. So it's where the, you remember the old outbuilding where Artist Alley was. Well, yeah, and there was, and they also did like when we went to the Dragon Ball Z movie thing, the Broly movie, I think it was the yeah the, the trailer for that. The, that it like they they were supposed to bring those in house after they they finished yes. all of the. So yeah. this is it's now where that was. It's five stories. The fourth floor is all where they have all the panels now. It's all panel rooms on the fourth floor, and the fifth floor is the whole floor is one big panel room and it's the empire stage and that's where like they did the michael j fox 
Christopher Lloyd reunion. That's where they showed the Mario uh, trailer, where they showed all the big trailers was there. And it's, I don't know if it's as big as Hall H, but it's huge. It's, and you know, it probably holds at least a thousand or so people. I had always been surprised because as big as NYCC was when, when I was there three years ago, when I went to Awesome Con in Washington, D.C., I felt like it was bigger there and they had more, more separated rooms and, you know, for all these different panels and stuff like right. now New York is like, it's got to be right up there with San Fran, right? You mean San Diego, San Diego, right? San Fran. <laughs> I, I, sorry, San Fran is like one of my favorite places. And I used to go to the Java, the Java one conference there all the time. And, okay, you know, but, but, but yeah, yeah. No, I San mean, Diego. and it was great. And like, I, that's, I, I walked into that hall and I'm like, this has got to be, at, you know close to the size of hall h like they've got a place to do it now like that that's not an excuse anymore that they don't have a big hall to do these big announcements so so now that... their excuse is that everything in warner brothers is on fire <laughs> <laughs> but i will say i do have there's an article on the website i did a little wrap up posted it today about my experience at the convention so you guys should go check that out and again check out the review of of snowblind because I mean, it's out now, but it wasn't out when I posted the, uh, the, the review. And then Super Sons comes out later this month. So, but I don't have a review for that because I didn't go because I had an interview at the same time <laughs> they were showing that. You were only one person. Now, now, now we will be two next year. Yes. Well, I was two, but Karen was useless. I mean, love you, babe. <laughs> oh, dear. Speaking of on fire. She doesn't listen. Except for this one time, probably. <laughs> but the other thing I did today, since I didn't, I mean, not today, yesterday, since I didn't work in between getting batteries, I watched She-Hulk. You watched She-Hulk, but not not Werewolf by Night. Are you are you crazy? I had to watch, what you call it? The okay. Great okay. British Baking Show. Since, I mean, since I'm the only, first off, I don't want to do a formal review of Werewolf by Night until JD's on here, because he's the one I think is going to be, yeah. his history, with his history, he will be the one who will most appreciate it in several different ways. Definitely. But I will say this much, since you haven't seen it yet, this is probably one of the best things, that, no, this is the best thing that Marvel's done, period. This Come is, on. no, seriously, seriously. Better than Winter Soldier? Yes. Yeah. No. No. I, I Throwback to horror films. It, it's not just a hokey throwback to horror films. It was really, really, really good, man. It surprised the crap out of me. Is it scary? In some places, it is a horror film. And I mean, not can't be horror film. Well, more I'm, like, oops. Yeah, I'm, jump I'm, I'm your... just asking because I would watch it with karen but she doesn't like horror films so oh no no it'll be fine for that okay. like it's not bad bad but okay. but the thing is like yeah the, the trailers made it seem like it, it you know you had the old timey announcer with you know, horror right. and and thrills and no it's not like that at all it's actually amazing is it, it is is it all in black and white it is yes i'm gonna okay. say yes but you have to watch it okay and and let me put it to you this way: the director, the, I think it's the director that's quoted saying, "Yeah, I just wanted to do all these things, and Disney just kept saying yes, so I just kept on going, going farther and farther down the road with these things <laughs> until they said no. They never said no. Apparently, hmm. this what is, happened to Disney? <laughs> I, you know what happened to Disney? They had to put Deadpool on on Disney Plus. That's what happened. Oh, to Disney. so they said, "Fuck it." They. They quite literally said that to dude. No, I'm telling you, you have to watch this. You have to watch this show. Everybody listening to this has to have, okay, finish listening to the podcast, then go watch the show. Right. It is really, really worth it. I'm telling you. I've I've n I don't think I've ever this forcefully like <laughs> no, no, you, you haven't know, suggested something from Marvel. And and Marvel's had some really good things. And yes, Winter Soldier, awesome. This it's just, you know, and it, oh, yeah, I just, you got to watch it. I can't, I can't explain anything because I, any, and I get for any further into it and I'll be taking any, th any thunder away from, you know, JD and you and I okay. doing this, which we have to do next <clears throat> week. Okay. All right. All right. We it's should have been doing it now, but. Well, ugh. life happens. That's so, it's funny. I will say that too. While we were there, I think it was Thursday night had 
Winter Soldier on. No, no, First Avenger, Captain America, First Avenger. Friday night, Winter Soldier was on, and Saturday night, Age of Ultron was on TV. <laughs> so, yeah, I got to see some Marvel movies. <laughs> nice. Let, let me put it to you this way. When they, when they did the screenings at New York Comic Con, a lot of the people that went into the theater didn't know that what they were screening. They thought it was going to be one of the other things that you, you mentioned. Okay. And then when Werewolf by Night came on, they were like kind of disappointed. And this is what I hear. By the time everybody left an hour later, they were all like, holy crap, that was awesome. It it takes a lot to go from I'm really disappointed, you know, from not eat, from, from, from the get-go being I'm going to be disappointed with this to turning you completely around by the end. All that's right. how good that's how good this is all right i trust you i don't know if i should <laughs> in this yes in everything else you know lane deals eh, not really all right so let's <laughs> let's then talk about she hulk and we got daredevil finally yeah and i i don't know what all you know like it i feel like there's this whole cadre of people out there that 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 it just they're looking for anything okay. to complain I wanna, about i want to say something i i honestly feel like People just look for any negative tweet yes. and then they amplify it. And it right. doesn't really reflect how because people it gets, feel. Because it because, gets clicks. Because I don't think I met. Okay, so let me say this. I saw at least 12, 15, maybe 20 She-Hulks. So obviously people like the show, right? Like mm -hmm. there were a bunch of women dressed as She-Hulk. Well, yeah, it's empowering. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a female lead one now. Of the, it's good. One of the interviews that, that we did, she's a huge fan and she was talking about She-Hulk and like the complaints that I see are just stupid because yes. they don't make any sense. First off, the one that, the one that's being spread around social media is Daredevil had sex in the She-Hulk show. They've, they've ruined Daredevil for me. Daredevil what? had sex in the Daredevil show with everybody that was on Netflix. <laughs> Literally just about anybody walking around, right? Like, what are you talking about? And it is canon that they've hooked up in the comics. Like, yep. what? 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 Like, no, people, we need to ignore this stuff, people, because it's, it's people who don't know anything about the comics, don't know the characters, aren't mm -hmm. really fans. They're just trying to get people's goats and they're trying and the, to become famous by saying stuff like this. Or just get clicks. Yeah. yeah. The, the ones that I heard, the complaints that I heard were mostly about daredevil doesn't crack jokes or he's not as serious as he was before or blah 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 it's like no he did crack some jokes in in the original and yeah i mean they, they played they played him a little bit more angsty but that's it but this is this is set <clears throat> farther along in the timeline technically the the not exact timeline as the as the netflix ones so you know anybody's gonna soften up after a while once they've they've figured things out right so there's a run of daredevil in the early 2000s i want to say or maybe late 2000s early 2010s that was more of a comedic run it was after all the stuff with born again and and his his identity gets find found out and he moves to cal because he can't practice law in new york anymore he moves to california and he wears a t-shirt all the time that says i'm not daredevil <laughs> as a lawyer and it's like there's there's more of a comedic bent to those issues like yeah. to that run so it's also been done in the comics like people come on like <laughs> it, it you bring somebody in to a comedic based show and you don't expect them to crack jokes then like it's just going to bring the show down it's going to change the tone of the show no he's coming on her show he has to match her tone well that's not exactly true i would i would disagree with that but the thing is that again if even if you follow even if you just watched all the netflix stuff this is set technically after all that happened he's he's eased into his role he's more comfortable as daredevil now and and yeah he's going to him and Tatiana, or him, him and, and Jennifer Walters, they're both lawyers, they're both heroes, which gives them two incredibly specific points of interest that they they share, you know, right. that 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 and they both have problems finding relationships and uh, with people that that understand them. So yeah, they're gonna hook up. Right. Okay. And <laughs> and if I remember correctly, he never really hooks up with oh, what's the what's the the female lead from the daredevil show we talked about her last week my mind just 
Oh, Karen, so, Karen Page. Karen Page. Yeah. Like they don't really have a relationship. In fact, the whole second season is about his relationship with Electra. Like, yeah, Elodie Young. Mm. So, like, he didn't even really have a true love interest by the end. So, like, there's he, nothing wrong with that. And also, they haven't even said if this is the same Daredevil yet. Did he? He hooked up with Claire Temple, didn't he? Or was that? Or was that? No, that was Luke Cage. Oh, it was Luke Cage. Okay. Yeah. So. So. But like, I mean, it was you know, it was a, it was a fun episode. Like, there wasn't anything super serious until the end. I guess I don't even know how serious you could say that was her hulking out. She had every right. Are we doing spoilers? Yeah, we always do spoilers. Yeah, it was it was it was as good as showing a whole bunch of people revenge porn. It was it was it was she had every right to to bring that entire building down on those people's heads. Like not not the people running screaming, not the ones that were there. But like, that's the whole and that's the whole point of the of that scene is that like it doesn't matter it's the perception of she hulk now which which absolutely sucks and which actually tracks with with women in the workplace like if a woman get if a guy gets mad he's being assertive if a woman gets mad she's a bitch that's that's the way a, a lot of people I, paint I, these things i didn't take it that way i took it as well, in it, well, is I mean, she dangerous that's, like her cousin. That's, well, yeah, the, but that's that's it's it's the same analogy, right? Like it's it's the same thing. She because just because she's got green screen green skin, it's it's basically well, she gets mad. Oh my god, now she's dangerous when she's not. She had every right to be mad, right? I mean, like right. You and have she, a right and to she get mad. Do you have a right to destroy even. property? Is the question right? But the thing is, here's the question you got to be asking yourselves. Where did those guys with the sonic guns come from? Like, how how were they there so quick? That was a trap. The whole thing was a trap. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I thought it was weird, too. Like, they do it as, like, she's getting this award, but then they gave it to, like, a bunch of women, like, and then retreating it like a... It was so tongue-in-cheek commentary on, you know, how women are treated, where it was, like... Then it became, like, a Miss America content where they're asking like what's it mean to be a, a female lawyer to you you know yeah it's like really like is that really the direction we want to go after this whole season well they, they're that's the thing they're they're taking that from reality man that's how women are treated you know not as much anymore i don't not think. as much not, anymore yes but it's and not in, it's a, and not in a setting man. like that usually usually it's more professional in a setting like that but not... i think that was the the joke was was that like I don't think it was, it was, it was, they're making, they're trying to make fun of it, but it's also based on reality. Like it, yeah, that most real humor has to be based on reality. And that's unfortunate that we still have that to joke about. And it's also not a joke. So yeah, you know, I mean, I, it just, that I'm, I'm a guy and I'm talking about this. We should I wish we had a woman to come on and talk about this because it's it's really not my place, but I can sympathize and understand the point of view that they're showing. And it's going to hit some people really hard, right. especially that like, you know, I don't know if you, you checked Twitter, but that uh, that just that one scene where they started showing, you know, they they had recorded her having you know relations with the with the creep that took the film when they showed that i think that was very triggering for some women who've actually been through that in real life and a lot of people these days have been through that in real life and it's not it's it's horrible it's horrifying you know yeah no i don't disagree with that but yeah no it it, it was that's the thing though like you have to show that stuff sometimes to shine a light on it so well yeah and especially since that's kind of the whole point of this show like i mean it, yeah the the point of the show is you know it's it's she hulk and you know superhero and whatever but they're also i mean her 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 speech in the beginning you know what how are you when bruce is like you know how are you controlling your anger and she's like well it's same it, it's the same thing i deal with as a woman every day when i'm cat called when i'm mansplained blah 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 like women go through this and they're constantly having to control their anger because again, if they get angry, they're a bitch. When a man does it, he's assertive. 
Yeah. And that's, that's a very horrible part of our current society. And you're right. We're slowly learning. Unfortunately, we're very slowly learning. Yeah. So, but yeah, but uh, it was fun. I have seen Daredevil. Be interesting to see what the twist is at the end. Um, right. Like those guys with the sonic guns, like what is that? Is it just going to be the, what do they call it, the intelligentsia? Or is there going to be something? Or damage deeper? control? Like, right. Because that, right. They, they, I'm pretty sure they're from damage control because those are the same sonic weapons that were used on Bruce back in, I think, the second movie. Was it the second right. movie where they used? Yeah. Right. So that's my question. Like, is it going to be, or some sword or shield or, well, shield is gone. Shield, but. Shield's gone for now. They're persona non grata. They're often a right. different universe, but, but sword's still around. So, yeah. And how many episodes are left? Is, is left one. Next, the next week is left. It's, it's, okay. it, yeah. It's one, Cause that was, that was the joke. That was one, that was one of the good jokes in here. It's yes. like, shouldn't this be ending? Why isn't this, oh, is this a stinger? Oh, 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 the next episode's the last one. So now we got to go into that. Oh no. It was kind of funny. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and that was the thing too. Like that I can't think of her. The person, one of the people we interviewed, were talking about that. Like, it's so true. These people complaining about her breaking the fourth wall, and it's just like, oh, that's what I wanted to say. I saw a meme where they were trying to say they stole it from this other show. Her what uh, breaking? Her breaking the fourth wall. What and it's Ally like, McBeal or like you, you name it. They're like, uh, well, there's a, there's a lot I don't of remember, like ten no, no. out there. They, this was a show, like a recent show within the last five years on like hulu or netflix or something where the main character breaks the fourth wall and i'm like are they kidding with this like i said first flea off back flea back i think you're talking about maybe and I, I i did reply to it i'm like are you kidding me like first off she's been doing it in the comics since 89 in the savage sea hulk run deadpool's been deadpool did it in the movies before the show came out Deadpool, and, Deadpool came after her as far as fourth wall breaking, wasn't right, it? Right, right. But I'm saying in the in in movie wise and in, and in, in Marvel, like doing it on on screen. On screen Marvel right. did it in Deadpool before the show came out, and they all kind of stole it from Ferris Bueller. So like, can we like stop this? Like, and the, Mo Moonlighting and Fuller House, Secret Diary of a Call Girl, Malcolm in the Middle, they break Fresh the Prince of Bel Air. Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell did it. Yeah, that's all true. The, Zach all, Morris talked to the audience all the time. Yeah, all of these, and and even before She Hulk, I think isn't the first person that broke the fourth wall in Marvel. Wasn't that Howard the Duck? Possibly. I think I think Howard the Duck was the first Marvel character that broke the fourth wall regularly. I just realized yeah. my computer is unplugged, and I just got a low battery warning. Oh, cool. Oh, on a second. Things were going so well. Let's let's create some danger. All right. No, no, no. <laughs> I just plugged it in. We're good. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, so like, you know, it's it's just people that don't know what they're talking about. And I know it's so frustrating. It, it really is when you see stuff like this again, it's and, and it get, her, complaining about her breaking the fourth wall, complaining about Daredevil having sex with her. It's like you, people don't know what you're talking about. Like, yeah, I feel like you haven't even seen all the Marvel shows and, and movies and you're making these comments. And it's but it was like, just it was just, it's the same. I mean, it's the same problem as. The people that complained about that woman being a lesbian is like, why are they making her a lesbian? Oh, it's all woke culture. It's like, no, that was the whole character before in the comics. You just don't know that, do you? You're just complaining because you're you don't like lesbians. It's like, eh, you know. Anyway, exactly. So yeah. Speaking of people who complain, hey, let's do I mean, a little oh. social media <laughs> madness. Starting off with our good friend Kassan Warren sent us a nice lengthy tweet here. He said, first, thanks for taking the bullet and saving your fans from watching The Monsters. Your no. sacrifice will save me hours and hopefully put pressure on studios to stop putting out garbage. Every small effort helps. Yeah, that wasn't a bullet. That was a surface-to-surface -surface missile <laughs> tipped with C4 and sadness. Second, I, <laughs> and did you watch it? I I couldn't get through the first 10 yeah. minutes. I just, I, I tried. And like, Normally, normally, like I, I, you know, I could take a, a few shots of my my top shelf bourbon, but even that wouldn't nah, have helped. I didn't want to waste the bourbon. <laughs> Second, I've been watching the Hulk. I've been watching She Hulk. Sorry, I've been mm -hmm. watching She Hulk. It's a solid six, but I'm a fan of Tatiana Maslany from her days in 
at Orphan Black. Yep. The issue I have with the show is how suddenly every character around her suddenly loses their prestige. Hulk reduced to whatever is portrayed on the screen hurts. Sure, characters are static, but the writers shouldn't have to denigrate him to elevate She-Hulk. Other than that, the show is humorous and a nice showcase of what is to come. Finally, I, have fun at New York Comic Con. Dave, I love connections. We have conventions. Yeah. Conventions, I'm sorry. We have SuperCon down here in Miami, but I'd love to hit up one of the bigger ones like New York or San Diego or Dragon Con one day. Have fun. Oh um, my, my my only advice for that is bring lots of ibuprofen and power bars. Yeah. I'd and like orthotics. To, have I, have really spongy orthotics in your shoes. So so the funny thing about that is I've I have said that I would like to do Dragon Con, but I'm starting to feel like I might be too old to do Dragon Con because from my understanding, it's a nonstop party, unlike other conventions. So I don't know. Because it's it takes place in the hotels where everyone stays. So it's not oh, like, you know, school, yeah. You know, so it's not like at New York Comic Con I go to the convention center and then at night I go back to my hotel, which is five blocks away from the convention center and sleep. <laughs> like this is the, the convention still going on in the hotels. So the, the only ones I do like that are like total con in, in Boston for like when you want to do gaming, yeah. cause then you can go from room to room and join a game or something. And usually they, they rent out a couple of the, the larger halls in the, in the hotel as well. But, but, but yeah, as far as Kassan's comment on, uh, so I, I don't think, this. I don't think they're really denigrating. The Everyone Hulk keeps pointing her- out the, when Jennifer tries to leave the first time and she's in the Jeep and she like hits him with the Jeep and he goes, you know, and, and he gets knocked over by it. But it's like, that makes sense on a lot of levels. Number one, Professor Hulk isn't as strong as Savage Hulk. Like people need to understand that. Like he's, he's still strong, but he's not as strong as he was Two, It's his cousin. He's not going to like put all his strength into fighting her. Cause he's not, want to, he doesn't know how strong she is. And she wasn't in Hulk form. He doesn't want to hurt her. Like that was stupid. Like, it, like, of course, like everyone keeps pointing to that scene is like, Oh, they depowered him. And it's like, no, if you think about it logically, he's still trying to be careful not to right. hurt people around him. Including, exactly. And this is his cousin. So he really doesn't want to right. hurt. I, I do agree with Kassan about orphan black Tatiana, Tatiana Maslavny, whose name is a real tongue twister. Sometimes <laughs> she, the, the amount of talent she has is, is hardly being scratched in the show. I, I mean, she'll, I hope they they utilize her much much more in depth in the movies or another uh, or She Hulk, you know, follow up series or something because she's. Uh, do you do you know about Orphan Black? Oh yeah, yeah. Where she's it's their she, clones, right? She played I don't know how many tens of different clones with all different personalities and stuff, and like she's freaking amazing. So yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's all I got to say. All right. Well, moving on again, we talked about Ezra Miller and all of his issues. I can't wait to not have to talk about him anymore. And, you know, you know, do people think this movie is still coming out? To which Shadow Walker, the demon said, I say fire Ezra Miller and cancel this movie and lock him in prison and cancel the 2023 Snyverse. I think he meant Snyderverse stuff and tell Rock, Zack Snyder and Snyderverse fans, it's dead and not returning ever. Ow. A little harsh there. The Gorilla Brain podcast pointed out they just ordered more reshoots. Wow. Yes. But that's that's bringing Henry Cavill, to, isn't it? To which I replied, throw more money at it. That's a, That always works. Yeah, I know, right. Which I, and then I used the meme of Chris Pratt from the Jurassic World movies. Oh, God. Going, Probably not a good idea. Yeah. Right, worked for the Snyder Cut. Oh, wait, no. Right, exactly. That's my point. Like, they threw a bunch of money to do the Snyder Cut, and Warner Brothers lost a bunch of money. This is a company that's in financial issues, and they're going to throw more money in a movie that people aren't going to watch to do reshoots because they're trying to retool this movie. And the universe, basically. And the universe right now. And it's like, don't hang all your hopes on this movie because Mm -hmm. it's going to flop at this point. But we're we're gonna we're gonna talk about this a little bit later, more in depth. But would these reshoots because they're bringing because Henry Cavill is basically coming back as Superman? Those aren't know. rumors anymore, by the way. There's too many there's too many reports of it now. Like I, yeah. I kind of official. So 
that's yeah we'll, we'll talk about we'll get, it more we'll get in when we get to news yeah yeah but it, maybe i think they're trying to retool some stuff too they're trying to maybe they're trying to lessen his role in his own movie i don't know that's uh, that's gonna that's a i mean they, yeah. then then it goes straight to what you said it's like you, you, i mean you could throw more money at it, but it's just you're flushing that down the toilet and that and you know you don't have much money left from what we hear anyway yeah. moving on I just, moving I on do, uh we talked <laughs> we talked about the current rumors that harrison ford is the top contender to replace thunderbolt ross in the or to be the replacement for thunderbolt ross in the mcu to which random randy savage said i'm sorry we already have a ross in play and it is and that is play that is perfect why the hell would you just not use unless ghost rider oh yeah because he well, was in ghost rider too he was right? what oh what's his name the mustache he's do you have any idea how old that guy is i mean he was he, when he was born he was 55 what's but... his name oh my god it's on the tip of my tongue sam sam elliott sam elliott yeah um, thank elliott. you yeah like i get it and that's that's right he was in ghost rider but it's like and eh, nah. 78 years old harrison ford is like 80 so i know but again they need i hate to quote deadpool on this they need somebody who can who can you know hold a franchise for 10 to 20 years right or something yeah. like that or seven to ten years i think he said but they, they they're gonna need somebody to play general ross for at least a decade and you're not gonna do that with a 78 year old man i guess it depends also if they're planning to bring in red hulk at some point and, and, <laughs> um, they, you know they are timothy jones said i think he's up there in age so it might have to be a solo movie mm. <laughs> funny no, sour grapes, funny. ladies and gentlemen. Sour grapes available uh, in finer newspapers across the country. The Gorilla Brain podcast said he's not very convincing. He's not a very convincing military man, but we all saw Expendables three. Oh, that's that's rough. Shadow Walker said no, just recast Thunderbolt Ross into a younger person. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the the consensus. And then, of course, Randy also followed up with cough cough Crystal Skull yeah which is true like it, it's sad right but it's also the state of affairs like people pointed this out with uh, captain marvel where the de-aged sam jackson but he's running around and he looks like a guy in his 70s running so yeah <clears throat> and the last thing is a shame like something i really want to talk about with jd here an interesting graphic this is also from kasan warren an interesting we'll, graphic i found on we'll, reddit we'll, we'll bring this up with jd when we, next week because right. you're, you're right. This would be, so, I mean, we can talk about, a little bit about it now. So, so want. yeah, Amazon is, so the graphic I found on Reddit, Amazon is loading the streaming wars when it comes to quality. I can it's, see it's Amazon really wanting the DC reading? franchise for all of Warner Brother Discovery. And I can see why Netflix will try to block such a purchase. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a basically showing you like how many subscribers they have in the millions, how many like, yeah, we'll talk about this in depth. There, there's the, yeah, there's a distribution of of their the Rotten Tomato scores. They take the Rotten Tomato scores for all their shows and give the average of like Netflix has the most shows where their average Rotten Tomato score is like fifty three, so like yeah. a higher Rotten Tomato score. And I'm I'm telling you the reason why Disney is so low is because of all the all the live action remakes. Yeah, where Prime is, uh, Prime yeah, is the Prime, worst. Prime Video Prime Video has the most at the bottom. <clears throat> Right, uh, they've got a very the, the it's a dot distribution. I don't know if anybody's ever seen that, the, but uh, yeah, it's like they they have the most shows that that their Rotten Tomato scores are really just across the bottom. It's kind of fun. Yeah, anyway. and this isn't showing everyone because HBO Max isn't on here, and well, it depends. Uh, like, I'm surprised Peacock. they have enough numbers to to put together this information. You know, that's true, and I think they would all be at the bottom at this point. Oh wait, no. Hmm. Yeah, so we'll talk about that more with JD. It's interesting. I don't know where this is going. Yeah, at some point, I, I like there's there's probably going to be some more more mergers, but I think at one point or another they're going. I, the the monopoly protections that we have have been very loose over the last 40, 50 years, oh, yeah. but at some point they're going to start. They're going to have to start stepping in. Yeah, and it's like like I could see why Prime would want to buy warner brothers 
and Comcast is also looking at them. So. Right, right. But it's like Prime couple, just bought the ones. MGM, you know, so it's like... That's, that's a huge amount of, you know, backlog that they've got. Or what is it? Not, what do they call it? What's the term for that? Not backlog. It's... Uh, catalog? You catalog, know? yeah, catalog. That's what I mean. That's a huge catalog of, of stuff that they've got now. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick... Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Whew. My brain's not in the right place. That's all the social media madness for the week. And if you want to know how you can follow us on social media and be part of social media madness, here's our good friend D-Squared to tell you more. Enjoying the show? Want to be part of social media madness? Make sure you are following SuperheroSpeak.com where you can find all of the show's social media links at the top of the page. While you're there, you can check out old episodes of the podcast as well as some other great content. Check the site often because we are posting some great comic reviews as well as comic book and movie news content every day. Make sure and follow us on Twitter at Superhero Speak. And while you're there, check out the rest of the Geek World All Stars Podcast Network. You can follow them at stars underscore geek. The Geek World All Star Podcast Network include great programs such as the Pop Prison Power Podcast, Cult 45, So Wizard, Fans on Patrol, the Gorilla Brain Podcast, and of course, Superhero Speak. Search for hashtag GWAllStars. You will not be disappointed. Now, it's back to Dave and the boys on Superhero Speak. Come on, brain, turn on, turn on. You're, you're still right. recovering. It would, it, 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 New York Comic Con will do that to you, man. All right. Thanks for that, Don. And don't forget to check out the Omega Level Nerds podcast available on YouTube and wherever podcasts are available. And then on that note, we're going to take a quick commercial break and be right back with the news. After these messages, we'll be right back. All right. We're back. So the main news, first off, the, we got the, the out of New York Comic Con, we got the first look at super mario brothers the movie definitely going for a comedic tone that's why and i well, you know what it's Jack gonna be Black comedic bowser wasn't was not bad yeah yeah definitely i mean um, it's not that hard to do a, a lower pitched voice you know a little bit gravelly and you know yeah but he also also anyway. wasn't cracking a bunch of dumb jokes you know like he was just playing the part like well, that'd good. be just good writing and stage direction i mean right you know? I mean, but it's funny because they show up at this kingdom of the the penguins. I don't remember what the penguins are called in Super Mario Brothers, and they, they're throwing. They're like attack, and all these snowballs. But then, like when you they pan out, you see the penguins are much smaller than the Koopas, and the snowballs are just bouncing off of them. <laughs> and and it's like that is just a taste of our fury. Yeah. I, I love that line. It's great. Do and you guys? <laughs> And then Bowser says, who's going to stop me once he gets the, the power star and Mario shows up. Obviously, this is like, this is kind of like an origin that you can tell they're, that's what they're going for. Like an origin. This is his first time in the Mushroom Kingdom. Like he comes out of a pipe and he's like, what, where am I? And Toad shows up and, uh, and yeah, and you hear Chris Pratt talk a little bit. And again, it sounds like he's doing a Brooklyn accent, not a, it's a me Mario accent. <laughs> Right, but that's that's what people are going to expect because he's been the guy. They, they got that one actor who's been voicing him the games for the last twenty years yeah, or something. But, I mean, but then you take the argument of Lou Albano and oh no, let's not go back to Lou Albano. <laughs> but I mean, he did the voice of Mario, and then you t in the cartoon, and then you had Charles um, Martinet. By the way, Charles Martinet is the one that's been doing Mario and then since nineteen ninety two. Who played him so, in the in the other in the live action movie? Very famous actor. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Come on, don't you remember the live action Mario Brothers movie? Oh, 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 right. No, I don't know. Let me look it up. Somebody play like uh, some Bob Hopkins. some Jeopardy music. Yeah, Bob. Yeah. So uh, yes, yeah, but 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 that wasn't. Come on, that was that was, that movie. That movie was just horrible. Like that movie was just horrible. <laughs> That's the one that basically created the the law that went for another you know 30 years that said you cannot make a good video a good movie. video game movie right i just want to know you what the conversation adaption 
I want to know what the conversation was that facilitated them going, yeah, let's get Chris Pratt to do the voice of Mario. Like it just is such an odd choice. It well, really no, is. no, that, that, that one's easy. It's just, who can we get to do the voice who, that everybody's going to recognize the voice that gives you good feels, whose name is going to be big enough that, that we, we, that will help draw people to this show, you know? But, but the thing is like, they still don't seem to get that video. If you're going to do a video game adaption, you got to be, you've, you've got to pay, you, you've you got to pay your respects to the actual source. And Charles Martinet has been doing the voice since 1992. That's pe- when people see Mario and he opens his mouth, they're going to be hearing his voice. <laughs> you know? True. True. I'm not going to, I'm not going to disagree with that, but. Yeah, it just again. I want to know what facilitated. Yeah, because again, because of what you're saying, like it's not the voice people are expecting. Like, I mean, thank God he didn't do an Italian accent because I think that would have been worse. No, because he we he, I I can't admit. I mean, no, not Chris Pratt. He's good for a lot of things. I don't think accents are one of them. No. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, I th- it's gonna be funny. I, I'll give it that. It looks like it's going to be funny, but I don't know how it's going to do. You know, I, it was weird. I want to say this, like after the panel, they gave away free t-shirts to anyone who went to the panel and everyone was in line to get one of those t-shirts. I don't know if it was just because it was a free shirt or because they were excited for the movie, but <laughs> it was weird. If we're moving on, I'm going to interject something here. Well, what I was going to move on to, I don't know. I sent the other link later. Did you see the, the Thunder... Wednesday trailer? That's the other trailer. Oh, yeah, I've seen the account. Wednesday trailer. But let, let me. All right. So uh, we're go- let's move on. But I want to because this just happened. Like they, oh, okay. they're just announcing this right, right now. Interject. Dame Angela Lansbury just passed away at 96. Oh, wow. She was a she was a dame. Yep. I didn't know she was English. Are you nuts? No, she doesn't have a strong accent. Well, it's, it's the, the thing is that, you know, that's something that the queen does, or I think, I think that's how you become right, a Right, but I thought you had to be English for, well, she, anyway. no, no, you, but they, they can, they can do that for anybody. But the thing is she, yeah, she just, she just passed away. 96, um, yeah. 96 at one thirty AM today, October 11th. Ah. So that sucks. That was early this morning. As a, her, Angela Lansbury did a uh, voice of Miss Potts on Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. She's best known as Jessica Fletcher on CBS's Murder, she wrote. She's probably done God knows how much other stuff. You, If you heard her voice, you'd know it. I, I'll just put that. She's one of those people who's who's done so much on stage, screen, animation, whatever, that if you heard her voice, you'd know it. Yes, she was born in London. I did not know that. I honestly didn't know that, but I think she moved to the United States when she was young. But uh, yeah, I mean, anyone that's in our age group grew up with Murder, She Wrote on TV. And, you know, someone in your family probably watched it. That was one of those shows, though, like whenever there was a guest star on, you knew they were the murderer. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Whenever a big name showed up, it was like, oh, they're going to be the the guy, the murderer. (laughs) Like, you don't have to figure it out. Yeah. So sucks. Thanks for bringing the show down. Yeah, I, <laughs> we gotta do news. I just, you know, there goes another part of my childhood. Whoopee! Well, we're at that age. Yeah, that age sucks. So, yeah, it does. But what are but, you gonna do? But you know, what kid? Ha- what kid even now doesn't get sat down to watch Beauty and the Beast, the actual original animation? Right? No, I'm sure every. Yeah, I mean. Only, <laughs> only horrible parents would make them watch the live action one first, <laughs> right? Parents. <laughs> only I don't know. horrible there abusive are... parents would think that the live action one is the one that should be seen before the original animation. There are people. There are people <laughs> who are parents now who grew up with Harry Potter and Hermione, and, and they would still be monsters. <laughs> <laughs> Now I have to ask my daughter which one she showed my grandchildren first. Your daughter looks like Merida. She showed them the animation first. There's Maybe. no way. I trust your daughter. I don't know. She's 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 a huge Harry Potter fan. So, so all right. So uh, there's there's your depressing thing. I don't have any alcohol in front of me for this. So let's move on. Okay then. 
May she rest in peace. Definitely. So the other trailer that came in Pusky and Bucky. Right? The big, the other big trailer that came out was the Wednesday Adams full trailer where we got our first look at Uncle Fester. I love. I want. I can't wait to see this show. This show looks awesome. Like, yeah. like the whole point of Wednesday's character is just built on one thing: absolute tood. And she has tood. The actress they got for this is perfect. Like, you yeah. know, I can't wait. I, I, I mean, I'm wondering if they'll work Christina Ritchie in here somewhere just, just so that the, you know I think she can she's pass in it. it. I think is I she? Saw... Did she? Yeah, I think I saw somewhere that she's she has at least a cameo in the show. So because because um, she, I mean, she's she's doing just as good a job as as Ricci ever did, and that's saying something because Christina Ricci was just like you you, I mean, anybody these days who thinks of of Wednesday Adams, it they're thinking of Christina Ricci. Well, they're also thinking of Christina Ricci because she's probably one of the most beautiful women on the planet, and she's and she's amazing actress. But but yeah, like it's just. You have to have a certain presence oh. to be able to do Wednesday Adams, and uh, and and this this new actress is doing it. She was in the trailer. Oh, okay. She's the she's the the teacher. Oh, she's playing a teacher. Okay. Yes, she was the teacher in the trailer. So I was having too much fun wa- watching Wednesday, just being Wednesday. Like, man, did they got her down? And uh, Fred Armisen is playing Uncle Fester. And, yeah, that looks. He looks like he's gonna kill that role. And the actress so. is Jenna Ortega, who's playing Wednesday. And yes. let's see, how old is she? She's, oh, she's 20 years old. Damn. They found somebody who looks really young at 20. But so she's, she's like a Tom Holland. Yeah. But she's got, she's got, an, she's, she's playing it straight, man. I can't wait to see this. I really want to see this because she's, she's, she's killing that part. I mean, I know it's only trailers, but I think, I think it's, it looks good so far. And she's like, it's funny because you mentioned Christina Ricci. She's the one that kind of, I think she took stuff. I don't remember the girl. I don't know the girl's name who played her in the original TV show, but uh, Debbie Derryberry, I think. Okay. She, Cause she would do the things like she had the doll with no head and would say it was Marie Antoinette and all those kinds of things. So, and I think Christina Ricci took that. I mean, whoever wrote the movie, but I think she, she played off of that and turned it into, you know, a, total attitude and then now she's the original actress had attitude i mean the original part was play was written with attitude as well right like she was a little hellion and uh, right exactly and like the now they're taking it to the umpteenth level i mean when you drop piranha into the pool at school and to get you kicked out i think that's all you need to know <laughs> about the character <laughs> yeah let me make sure if i got this right to yeah wednesday oh wednesday adams the original actress was lisa loring okay that's it well who played played wednesday adams from 1964 to 1966 so two years that's all that show was on wow it feels longer doesn't it 1964 to 66 yeah but if you well that's like three seasons isn't it probably that's like enough enough for syndication basically right yeah it was on forever <laughs> those, those seasons all right now we're going to delve into a couple of rumors one's not really a rumor so jacob bolton who plays ned Leeds in the spider-man movies um recently said in an interview he doesn't know if his character's coming back or not because at the end of far from home of course everyone forgets who peter is so he doesn't know how they were how they're going to direct her. obviously come on people you want him to eventually have a happy ending. He's going to find a way to, you know, bring yeah. his friends back into his life. They're not going Bar- to leave it like that. Barring Sony interfering with things or or just being stupid, they will like reunite Peter with Ned and uh, and MJ. MJ. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. There's I'd... no way they're going to just leave that. We don't even know. I mean, heck, we've got a multiverse now. We've got time variant cops we've got all this crazy stuff we don't know what's going to happen like there could just be everyone just that he wants to have their memory back just gets their memory back somehow you know like he's magic exactly it's magic that's all it's mcu magic it's all you need to know people well yeah but ned is magic too so he might you know oh that's right say things things might i mean right there is like a plethora of different ways you could go to have him get his memory back Yes. Be interesting if he has a, he casts a spell that accidentally gives P- 
people their memories back and like a select few and then you could do an interesting story with that what so. mj you lost your keys here let me try and cast this spe- well he'd have to learn he, he i don't know no he, he only forgot peter so he knows he probably he, he still knows he's magic so yeah he'll probably be like oh i'll help you remember your keys boom oh who's this, this peter what did i, I left peter <laughs> gotta go find peter oh my like, god that's all they'd have to do isn't it yeah yeah because that'd be that would be ned that would be like penultimate ned <laughs> like, let me help you remember where you put your cell phone <laughs> yes i kind of feel like that was something that was said and then blown up to as we always say get clicks but it'll be interesting yeah i mean the the rumor is that he's signed on well tom holland is signed on for three more movies who knows what that means because the, that's the rumor then there's also saying they're not signing people to multi movie deals anymore and then of course there's also like the other actors are saying they haven't been approached yet to do the next spider-man movie so but they're putting those they, i mean they're putting the scripts together the pro they're probably waiting for for feige to to decide where he wants yeah phase five to go and then they'll write scripts along those lines or you know bring some writers in yeah everyone's distracted with the wolverine deadpool news anyway yeah so moving and then on. the <laughs> final bit that we have this i'm i have it in the rumor bin but a lot of people have been kind of confirming this this is a post credit scene in black adam superman shows up and it's henry cavill in the red and blue so and he says apparently this is the scene i don't know spoilers at the end of the movie black adam's there superman shows up and says black adam we need to talk and that's that's the whole scene so and and we can blame this on the rock the rumors yes. the the rumors say that the reason why henry cavill is coming back is because the rock sat there on the set of black adam telling them uh uh-uh, uh i want to bring henry cavill into this he has to come back into this i want to film scenes with henry cavill you're going to do that right and then he showed you know the producers his arms and and they went and got him <laughs> cavill <laughs> their big yeah. arms don't fight it <laughs> oh my god that's that's that is probably exactly what happened <laughs> I, I love that that that's just one one of his quotes from oh what was it called rampage he he, he took out like i th- I think it was like a uh an a, an mp and he, he's you know putting him in choke he's like it, it's a big arm don't fight it man <laughs> just choke and just choke the guy out <laughs> <laughs> that's that's um, probably what he did to one of the producers <laughs> so what i forgot to tell you is one of the people i interviewed at new york comic-con was jack dylan grazer that sounds familiar why does it sound familiar he plays freddy in the shazam movies oh all right this was in one of the warner brothers roundtables he's the voice of jonathan kent in the super sons movie and uh, he's pretty cool we're not allowed to ask him about shazam you weren't allowed? We weren't allowed to ask him about Fury of the Gods. Really? Uh-huh. Why? Because of spoilers. Oh, they it's, didn't trust it. it yeah. Is this another Tom Holland thing where it's like, I don't ask him so, anything? Because, because if, you, if you ask him anything, he's going to, you know, we just, the ninjas aren't going to be fast enough to shut him up. <laughs> I think so, though. I mean, he mentioned, he did talk about the movie a little bit, just like, you know, he is the penultimate fanboy, DC fanboy, like. The character Freddy from Shazam that like, yep, that's him. That is who he is in real life. He is so excited to be like part of the whole thing. And, uh, you know, basically he was saying things like, you can't wait for people to see the, see the movie, but uh, yeah, cause that's rumors too, is that he's in Shazam and uh, possibly flash and that this is building up to another s- solo Superman movie. Right. So. They, they, they kind of. I don't know if it's announced, announced, or it's just like, it's just making the rounds that this is actually happening, but they, they, they're which, saying that there's going to be a, a follow-up to Man of Steel. Which like, also then begs mm-hmm. the question, how does this play into the other rumor that he's the front runner to be the replacement for James Bond? Who the hell knows? <laughs> like, here's, that's my question, right? With the way that the DCEU went, you're Henry Cavill, you've got James Bond in one hand, and you've got return as superman in the other what decision do you make super bond <laughs> i mean 
let's face it, James Bond is basically Superman anyway. It wouldn't be surprising if he like walked up to somebody from what's what's the 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 bad guys on Bond, what whatever that if he, if he walked up to Blofeld and well, just ripped his shirt open and there was the S, right? Because yeah. come on, Bond is you is human. Nah, he can't be human, not in survival, all that crap. Come on. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, there's also there's other actors that have been rumored but he was a rumored as the front runner so i don't it's it, it's interesting because on one hand you keep hearing that the snyderverse is dead the dceu is done and they're, they're gonna just do solo films but it feels like they're trying to pull it out of the depths of dying and bring it back to life at least they're, not, trying, they're trying to pull it out of the fire is what you're out saying. of the fire right not necessarily snyderverse but at least these versions of the characters and keep going with them somehow. but you know if you think long term about that on the one hand, they don't have many ways they can go right now to make money right to to make money as fast as they need right. to. They can't reboot. They can't recast everybody. They, and in some cases, they can't because I'm sorry, but what's her name for Wonder Woman? Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot, perfect Wonder Woman, right? Yeah. They just need to give her some good scripts and and help her to emote a little bit more. But but the thing is, like, yeah, they 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 can't. They can't do anything other than continue on and maybe, you know, write the bicycle as they're going. But on the other hand, long term, you want to introduce some of the MCU. You go yeah. back to, OK, here's Iron Man. They watch Iron Man. They're like, oh, well, I want to see the rest of this. They, they're going to, you know, you want to start watching the DC universe. You go back to Man of Steel and you know you're kind of like iffy at best uh -huh. and then you hit batman v superman there's no way you're gonna get past that to go on you know yeah and i and it that goes back to one of the biggest problems i feel like warner brothers and dc in general has is like there's this concept of well you're gonna watch it just because superman's in it not we have to worry about this being a really good movie you know Right, which they they're they're all they're already smoking too much crack there. I mean, like we don't need to help them with that. So, so we'll see. Like, hopefully, with new people in charge, that they can build something. But just keep Zack Snyder as and far Hans Zimmer away from, and Hans as far as way as possible. Oh, yeah, I heard they're gonna right. They're gonna use more William score. That's the other the rumor is that it's John Williams Superman theme when he shows up in this clip. God damn straight. They finally on well, maybe maybe somebody from Discovery got involved and they finally understand, or kinda, at least there's one person, one one actual fanboy there that understands. Maybe it was maybe it was The Rock. You know, maybe he said, you know, if you want to get people excited, play the Williams theme when he shows up. Uh, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be unhappy if, you know, The Rock choked out Hans Zimmer. That'd be <laughs> <laughs> it's like I I'm sorry, Hans Zimmer's stuff is crap. Every time he's been involved with with other stuff, there's always been another composer there that pulls him that pulls his head out of his ass. It's like well, I feel like like I think what they need to do because I'm pretty sure John Williams is retired again. He retired and he came out of retirement. Then I think he retired again. But for the Obi Wan, they used Williams' music and then had another composer who tried to who composed in the same style as him to fit with the, the the you know the already existing music like just do that you yeah. know for superman like use the original williams theme and then do a new movie but fire zimmer and find somebody who's willing to write in in his well, they, style you know what they already have i don't i'd have to look it up okay i don't know who did the music for bruce tim's superman adventures of superman run but the theme they have there was right in the same you know the same theme as yeah. john williams score it it brought back those it it you know it was varied it told a story through yeah. through through sound i mean it was it was really good i have to look that up because that was i do feel like at least through the 80s and 90s everyone tried to copy williams because he was the composer for movies like yeah but all the, the big movies is him but you yeah. can't like there are there are composers like Zimmer, like Andrew Lloyd Webber, who they they do some some good stuff, but most of their stuff kind of sounds the same and it's right. kind of reductive and all that. 
And then you get well, it's, incredible people like John Williams that come, come across once well, in a generation. But that's the thing. I think Zimmer comes out and goes, well, I'm going to zig while everyone's zagging and I'm going to be different. So he stands out a little bit from some of the stuff he does. So then they're like, oh, well, we'll hire you to do Superman. And it's just like, yeah, but there's nothing to this. It's a single droning note thing. Yeah. It's like it doesn't work. Yeah. So, yeah. So composers, theme music composer was Shirley Walker for Superman, the animated series. Okay. Oh, what? She died in 2006. Well, that stinks. That really, really sucks. Well, yeah, who did the that, music for Obi Wan? Again, I'd have to look that up. I don't want to stall All the right. show while I like just. All right. Well, just we won't worry about it right now. But that's somebody I think you know. He maybe he could come in and, and lend a hand. Um, yeah, or or you know what? The guy who did the music for what is it? Oh, Kung Fu Panda Two. Kung Fu Panda Two. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, I, I can't say that I remember the music for that. It was no. It it's. I mean, yeah, John Powell. John Powell. He's still around, right? Don't tell me he died. Please don't tell me he died. He's 59 years old. Good. John Powell did the music for, like, he worked with, Hans Zimmer did some of the music for for Kung Fu Panda as well. Okay. But John Powell's stuff is way more memorable. He did the music for How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, his his stuff is, is solid, man. You know? And it tells a story, and it's, you know, it's not all one note with a lot of blah in it. And, you know. I hate that. That I the bois is like a J.J. Abrams lens flare. Yeah, I know. It's in like everything he does, and it's annoying. It's a crutch. He Very did the music so. for he did the music for Evolution too by Ivan Reitman in two thousand and one, and he did Chicken Run and The Adventures of Pluto Nash. Oh my God, who remembers that? The Born Supremacy. He did the he did the stuff of Born Supremacy. So yeah, I mean, there's good composers out there. He's done stuff that people still remember. So yeah, I think the only good thing that thinks Zimmer wrote it is the Wonder Woman that guitar. Yeah, but like, that's only got two different sections. In, <laughs> like you know, no, I know, but I mean, it's it's memorable and it stands out when she shows up on screen and they play it. Like yeah. I call, I, a broken but clock like, is right twice a day. I mean, you know. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, you can't, like, you could not have someone hum the Zimmer Superman theme. Like, because it, you don't remember it. Well, but you, if you could, said, but you'd need lip surgery afterwards. But if you say hum, <laughs> if you say hum the Superman, the, the Williams Superman theme, everyone's going to go, da, 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 da. You can, like, you can ask them to hum any theme that John Williams has done. Raiders of the Lost Ark, da, da, Star da, Wars. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any any of them, and people know them right off the bat. And yeah. when you and when you hum them, you see it in your head. That's the thing, you know? Like I just I it's I it all I don't know. with da, 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 da. Yeah, I just how how do you find a person who can translate like ideas and imagination? directly into sound in such a way that other human beings can listen to so, that sound and get it right there and then well, it's amazing i want to say this because as a as a musician and as somebody who loves this stuff like you're right it's not just putting music it's it's fitting the mood and this is this is a great point i think i'm coming up with this point but <laughs> it's maybe too much ego Williams said when he wrote the Superman theme, it was like, I think it's like, here comes Superman or something like, like, like he had words that mm -hmm. he translated to, to rhythm, which then became notes. But then the idea is like, dun, 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 dun. it lifts up. Like the idea it's Superman takes flight, but also Superman lifts you up. Right. This whole idea of like Superman is what we should be aspiring to. We should be reaching up to be Superman. Right. Right the whole uplifting zimmer no like there's nothing in the, his theme that uplifts you like the music that's why it doesn't it's just, work he's just hitting you with the patented sound wall that's basically it <laughs> yeah. no that's it that's it because there are there are breaks in john williams score you know right and and and, and they allow other instruments to to come in of course. and and lift you even higher or take you on a you know it's the same thing with raiders of the lost ark you know that that takes you on on an adventure 
You know, it does. Yeah. It doesn't lift you up like Superman. It's taking you on an adventure, and that's how it did. Dun, da, 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 dun, da, da. Right, you want to go? You want to like? Da, 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 da. Like it just, yeah. Exactly. So, so yeah, Hans Zimmer still sucks. All right. Well, that is all the news I brought, and then of course John brought us down with the death of poor Angela, Angela Lansbury. Lansbury. Dame Angela Lansbury, because she deserved it. She was an amazing woman. All right. Well, what we're going to do is. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we're going to come back with two interviews from New York Comic Con. After these messages, we'll be right back. All right, we're back. So, this first interview is I, so IDW reached out. We got a bunch of different interviews from writers, one of them being Rich Dewick, which I'll bring later. Of course, we all, Rich is a friend of the show, he's been on many times. And originally we were only supposed to get 10 minutes and he was basically like, screw it. And we think we talked for like 20 minutes, but anyway, <laughs> regardless of that, I, I can't wait to bring you that interview, but Matt Klein, Matthew, sorry, Klein, I wrote a book called crashing. And I think you would find this fascinating, John, actually, it's about a doctor who works at a hospital. It's a woman and, or no, no nurse. I'm sorry. She's a nurse. And she treats super, it's, it, this is in Boston. And during the day at this hospital, she treats superheroes who get injured during, in fights and stuff. You know, I was going to say night nurse, but she sounds a lot like that night, night nurse. I wasn't that far off. And at night, she moon nights, haha, moon night. She uh -oh. moon nights and does and helps the villains out. <laughs> she treats the villains who get Taking hurt in the same battles. She's, so she's she taking walks, the Hippocratic Oath, right? Right, <laughs> exactly. Like she's helping and and she's walking a thin line between these two worlds. And at the same time, because of the stress of this life, she's dealing with addiction. Oh, not good. So that's the whole plot of it. And it's really good. I, I got the first issue and I highly recommend it. So without further ado, here is Matthew Klein. All right. Hi. Hi, so we are here at the IDW Cafe. It's a very like fresca sort of outdoor booth. It's really lovely. It's got, we got vines on the walls. We have these beautiful like uh, metal tables. Are these really like yeah, they are great metal. tables? Beautiful stone floors. Like we are really, it, we're in New York, but really we're in Venice <laughs> as, as far as I'm concerned. So we are talking with the creative mind behind Crashing, Matthew Klein from IDW Publishing. How are you doing, sir? Uh, I am having a blast. Just got through uh, my first signing here at the IDW booth, which was an absolute privilege and honor. I'm coming off uh, like an eight-store, seven-day tour uh, uh, to sign the book. I'm getting some amazing feedback, and yeah, I'm just thrilled to be here talking with you. So... What do you think of the con? Have you been to New York Comic Con before? Yeah, so I, I have a weird, interesting background in comics. I've literally done everything in comics except work for a printer. Okay. I started as a retailer at Forbidden Planet here in Manhattan. Okay. Then I worked at Valiant Entertainment for six years, and I ended up being the vice president of sales and marketing up until 2021. So I have been, I used to be on the road for Valiant 20 weekends a year. Yeah, I would okay. go to conventions all over the country, Canada, the UK. I've been to over 250 comic shops. Uh, it's insane. And now I work for Penguin Random House is my day job. Right. I sell comics to the stores on the West Coast. Those are my accounts. Right, right. So I have literally now done just about every job there is in comics. So I'm very familiar with New York. And fortunately this year, I didn't have to drive the truck to the back of the Javits. <laughs> I just have to be here signing at the booth and saying hi to stores on the floor. It's a much more <laughs> less stressful environment. So Hence my joy. You so can, I was here last year. Right on. And they had it, but I didn't it didn't feel like we were back. I kind of feel sure. like it's back now. I looking at the floor, I think it's definitely back. I don't yeah. know if they'll break 175 this year, but I think they'll get pretty close. I think so. Uh, but everybody's excited, everybody's back in costume, the dealers are doing really well, the lines are long at the craters, artist alley is hopping again. This really feels like the, the comeback story for the con this year after right. three I, years. There were no publishers here last year. No, no, yeah, there weren't. So there weren't. And here you got IDW's here, a lot of great people. Penguin Random House, shout out to them. They're over <laughs> there. Uh, I like my paycheck. I got to, you know. But uh, but no, it's great. It really, it really does feel like a homecoming in a lot of ways. Yes. And I'm local, too. I live here in New York. Uh, so this is my local show. I love being here. 
The vibe is always great. This is still a comics-focused show yes. in a lot of ways, which I really appreciate. That was where my love came into it, so it's really nice to see it. So, for, yeah. the, for the people listening, oh sure, what is the elevator pitch for Crashing? Sure. Uh, so, basically, I pitch Crashing. It's Nurse Jackie meets Daredevil. Okay. You follow a doctor who, by day, treats superheroes and Moonlight's treating supervillains. And on the worst day of her career, she has to save Boston's greatest protector and its destroyer, all without relapsing after being seven years sober. Can she save the hero, the villain, and herself? You find out in issue one the answer to all three of those questions, and that's where our story kicks off. Huh. So that sounds like a very deep and maybe personal story. Is there some kind of inspiration behind that? So the inspiration behind Crashing uh, came from seeing testimonials of doctors in the pandemic. Okay. They would be going in every day, and this was before antivirals, before vaccines. Right, right. When they are going in there and the wards are filled and they don't know if they can save anybody. And I was right. watching videos of doctors and nurses talking about having panic attacks in the parking lots before yeah. going in and doing a 12 hour shift and separating families and wearing the garb and just being beaten down day after day. Yeah. And that's where Rose Osler was born, was out of a story of an everyday hero who is trapped in a circumstance that is completely overwhelming and stressing her and triggering her in a way that elicits her greatest impulse, which is to save everyone, but also her worst, which is to neglect herself. And that is really where Crashing came from. That was the germ of the idea. That's actually brilliant. And I love when people can Thank take- Thank you, that's a, very kind. I, I love when people take a real world scenario and then can put it in a fictional world where you don't feel like you're beating a message to someone. You're telling a, a story of, yeah. mor a, of morality, of human survival, and not pushing an agenda on someone. No, and it's, it's also a story of addiction, which is something that's rampant right now yes. in this country. We had 108,000 overdose deaths in a 12-month period. That's the highest on record since they've been tracking it. And that was a really important thing for me, too. My mother's an addictions counselor for 40 mm -hmm. years. Um, I've grown up around uh, people who've struggled with those issues. Yeah. I know I have those tendencies. I just managed to channel it in the comic books and collection. <laughs> there you but go. But we all do. So it's so we also really, th this is the story of an addict who's an everyday hero who's got the power of life and death over people with superpowers. Right. That is what she's got. But also she's struggling with her own her own demons and her own worst impulses. And it all comes out of being willing to sacrifice herself to save everybody else. But at a certain point, you also have to save yourself in order to save everybody else. Right. Where do you fall in? So we take addiction. We take the pandemic. We also take uh, a stand in the book. There's a wonderful subplot about people with powers being threatened to have their health care taken away, employment status if they do not register themselves, which okay. has a lot of really great world world, uh, real world application from what's been going on over the last couple of years. So it's a really relevant book. We have these wonderful themes going through, and I hope that there's something in there to resonate for everybody who picks it up. Awesome. So what's, do you have a, um, a plan, like an end goal? Is it so many issues or? Uh, right now it's five issues. Okay. Uh, we do tell a complete story for yes. Rose in that issue. But at the same time, if, if sales go well and there's demand from the fans out there, we can always I revisit and come back. Because once you start going into this world, it's going to be like Astro City. You can go any and everywhere. Right, you right. know what I mean? So there's a great tapestry of stories if we want to keep going and tell them. What's more fun to write, a, a villain or a hero? <sighs> it's a great question. Um, fun villain. Okay. Rewarding heroes. Cathartic, cathartic there you go, heroes. There you go. That's really what it is. So this is actually a good question because sure. something we ask everyone. Okay. And I feel it, it, it's in theme with the book. Um, we actually normally end the podcast with don't let your cape get caught in the door. With what? Sorry. Don't let your cape get caught in the door. Oh, right on. Which has become to mean don't let shortcomings or foibles get in your way of achieving your goals. Right. What's a shortcoming in your life that you've overcome to achieve a goal? Fear of failure. Okay. Um, Failure is the actual path to success. And my fear of failure kept me for many years from really achieving something like crashing. This is my first comic being published. Um, I was a playwright and wrote audio dramas for many, many years. And I was scared of getting into the space that I've been a part of the comics industry for a decade. 
Right. And my fear held me back. My fear of failure held me back. And every time I've managed to overcome that fear of failure and embrace failure, I'm not saying I overcame the fear and succeeded. I overcame and just failed. And I was willing to keep failing. And every time I failed at something, I got better at it. And suddenly, I wasn't failing anymore. I was succeeding. So I tell everybody, failure is the path to success. Every writer out there, your first draft should suck. And if it doesn't suck, you did it wrong. And every draft, you still fail until you get to that final one. Right. But it will get better and better and better. And you learn something. And those lessons stick with you longer. So if you fail enough, you will inevitably succeed. It's just a matter of how much are you willing to fail. I, that's, that is brilliant advice for anyone. And I think, it does not matter your career. It does not matter your passion. I, I mean, to be honest, I kind of feel like we're in a world where we, we're, we're too afraid to let people fail. Exactly. And... Yes, I do think success comes from failure. Like, yes. I mean, I've been doing this for nine and a half years now. Right on. I've had the door closed on me many times. Absolutely. And, but you know what? I get to have great conversations with people like yourself, and I'll just, you know, I just keep going. Like, yeah, I just, I, you learn from your failures. Pick yourself up and move on. Again, that's, it's the only way we all succeed is we have to fail first. Yes. I, imagine if we lived in a society where every day your parents said to you, tell me how you failed today. I want to hear that because that's exciting. That means we learned something. That means you're going to grow from it. Like if that was the mentality and not tell me you got an A plus on your math test. Tell me you got top of the class marks. But if they said, how did you fail today? Imagine what we would all be like, what a generation would be. And we can do it. There's nothing stopping us. No, but absolutely. So along those lines and the question that we normally end on is how do you measure success? You know what? For crashing, it was very easy. Um, uh, I, a previous podcast I did, one of the hosts said to me, um, I'm a recovering addict and mm-hmm. I read this story and I related to it so much. And thank you so much for treating it in such a realistic, serious and respectful way that I haven't seen it done in comics. And right then and there, this is a successful book. If it touches someone going through that issue, right. that we did our job by telling Rose's story in a way that's relatable, not exploitative. And that can bring awareness to something like that and make somebody who's going through it feel seen. Even just one person, the book is a success. That's awesome. how I ventured it. That, that is the best way to look at it, I think. Yeah. All right, so where can people find you online? Sure. Um, so I was an idiot and didn't make all my socials the same thing early on because I never <laughs> thought I would need to. So you can find me on Twitter at MatthewKlein316 because I'm a huge Stone Cold Steve Austin mark. And then you can find me on uh, Instagram at MacTheKnife1116. And Crashing is available in all local Crashing comic is available stores. in all comic shops out there. I can attest to this. I've been to so many of them, and they're all <laughs> stocking it. Uh, so, yes, anywhere comics are sold. And also, if you don't have a comic shop near you, you can go on to places like Midtown, DCBS. There are plenty of really great stores that do mail order. Uh, they'll be happy to send you a copy your way. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for the time. It's been a pleasure. All right. Now, I thank you for that, Matthew. And this interview here, she reached out to us directly on email because for those who don't know, when you're pressed at a convention like this, you get put on a list that gets sent to all the exhibitors, the artists, if they want to do press or and all the PR people that are going to be there and they'll reach out to you. So Caden Phoenix reached out to us directly asking if we'd be willing to talk about her book on the show. And I said, I want to do an interview at your table. Her book is that she currently has out is Ala Brava. It is a Latina superhero team. So it was something that she's obviously Latina. So she wanted to do a book that represented her. She has four individual issues of, of the separate characters. And this is them finally teaming up as a, as a, a hero team. Her, her, her name sounds like a superhero name. Caden Phoenix. Yes. And, what and I the, will say, the illustrator's name was Amanda. Yes, it's all all Latina Mulieta women Gonzalez. that work on the book. Mm-hmm. So what I will say is the four individual issues are in Spanish. Cool. Where the but the the team up book is in English. So that's and the you, one that I have. <laughs> and you can find her stuff at latinasuperheroes.com. Yes, which she will tell you about in this interview. So take it away, Caden. <laughs> all right. Oh. Yes. All right, everyone. We are now here in New York Comic Con on Artist Alley. 
And we're talking yes. to Caden Phoenix, the creator of Ala Brava. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for being here. Ah, no worries. Um, so you had said uh, in your email that you've been on to many cons on the West Coast. Is this your first New York Comic Con? It is absolutely my first. Yes, as a visitor and also you know as an attendee and as an exhibitor. So obviously I'm on the exhibitor side, but I've never stepped foot in New York Comic Con. Okay, were you here last year? I was not. No, I've never been. Oh, uh, you just said that. Duh. <laughs> Um, no, it's, um, it's funny, obviously because of the pandemic, they didn't have it in 2020. They had it last year, but it didn't feel the same. There was barely any event vendors upstairs and I knew when the, the aisles were wild, but I will say this year it's back. Like this is yeah. the New York Comic Con I've always known. Good. Um, it's great. I mean, it's just to see the people in costumes, it's crowded everywhere. You know, so how's the con been for you? It's been really nice. Everyone's so, so happy and, like, energetic. And they have so much, you know, vigor and, like, life again. So it's just nice to be around people for once. Yes. Uh, and then the New Yorkers, right? They light up. I have a, a Latina superhero that is from New York. She's my Dominican, my New Yorker. Uh, and, of course, that's the person they always go to. So I'm very happy. Of course, that I can bring them, you know, their own, say, Latina superhero. So... So for the listeners, what is the elevator pitch for Ala Brava? Ala Brava is the first Latino superhero team in comic book history. There's five origin stories, all different uh, new characters, and then they all come together as a team called Ala Brava. Okay. And what was the what was the inspiration behind it? Was it? I, I don't want to lead. <laughs> what was the inspiration? I was going to say because I hear a lot from creators like yourself. You wanted to see yourself reflected in a comic book. True. Yeah, my inspiration behind it was actually I want to see. Not, not myself, but I want to say Latina superhero on the big screen. So I read out a few daily screenplay. I shot a short film, like a sizzle, and everybody asked me for the comic. And so every time I was like, no, but then eventually, obviously, I did the comic, so I pivoted, and I started doing the graphic novels because, like, it's still storytelling. It's still getting the story out there. Right. And it works to bring it back up to becoming a feature, hopefully in the future. Yes. I mean, I guess the argument was uh, America Chavez mm -hmm. until they made her an alien. So... <laughs> We're getting there, slowly but surely we're getting there. <laughs> so, um, how long has the book been out, and, and um, has, has it been received well? So, received well, yes, absolutely. Uh, the first one came out in uh, Jalisco in late 2019, and like, LA Comic Con brought me right in. I'm, I'm West Coast, so LA Comic Con brought me right in. WonderCon, the San Diego found me online, which was really nice. So I was set up to go to those oh, wow. in 2020, and so it's pre-pandemic of course and then it was a pause button as we know and so the most recent one was Brava, which is the team one itself and that one just came out for San Diego Comic Con and then the first time debuting here all of my books debuting here oh okay so they, it all started as standalone characters and you brought them together Correct. as a team okay and um I mean this has got to be a labor of love um mm -hmm. how long have you been working on it since 2019 2019 okay so three years That's not bad I mean I know plenty of independent creators that have been working since 2019 and have one book out since 2019. Wow. So. Yeah, I, I hire my art. I'm very lucky. Like, I have so much, so many amazing, like, artists on my crew. I have, like, four to roughly six artists per book. So they're, they're working. I, you know, I'm, I'm there as the editor and the boss, but, like, they're working really hard. Cool, cool. Yes, I mean, I guess you have been uh, pretty lucky. Like our co-host, JD, uh, on the podcast... Um, started out doing comics and was having a really hard time finding reliable artists uh -huh. that could either deliver on time. And, uh, he he had done uh, was working book one of a series where he had a four uh, story arc, four book arc uh, written, and the artist flaked on him after the first issue, wow. and it never got finished. And actually, he wow. just uh, turned it into a novel, and the novel just came out uh, oh, yeah. last week. So, but yeah, like I mean, that's it's it's tough. How do you? How did you go about finding the artists? I got uh, really lucky. So I'm a very social media. I come from marketing, so everything social media for me. So yes. like, there's hashtag women who draw, women who illustrate. So I just started going through all the hashtags, you know, just of that, and I started finding my tone of what I liked in terms of style. But also, of course, like I looked at everyone's ports, all the female sports, and ended up getting all Latinas, you know, which just came out of it. And they, they understood obviously the world and the authenticity, the vibe that I was going for. And so I just um, I looked at the ports and I started writing them cold. And I got one, I got one really cool one that was, was based in LA at that time. And then she's like, I'll give you a tweet and I'll put it like on the tweet. She's like, Latina writer looking for Latina artist for Latina superhero drop your ports. And I got eight replies. And then from there, I just got everybody. All right, can I ask you a loaded question? Sure. I like loaded. Go ahead. Okay, and this is this is just because of the world that we currently live in. Uh -huh. You keep saying Latina, and obviously that's important to you because it's a female hero okay. as well. Uh -huh. 
What do you think of the term Latin X that they, I think one side of the political aisle keeps pushing on people? I, I don't mind the word Latin X. I say Latina because so Latin X and Latina, so with the E or the X, it's, it's inclusive. So I include okay. non-binary people. So why would I not include them? Right, right. So absolutely, I'm all for that. I'm not going to debate which is the correct one. I say Latina because that comes from Latin America. Whereas right. Latin X came from like some some smaller person like in a university. You know, so I go with the Latina because that is Latin America and that is my choice. I don't think either of them are incorrect. Okay. I think if you're inclusive and you're trying good for you we can fight for other things I was also curious if you've gotten any criticism from that no 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 okay I'll right. back it up I mean if, if someone wants to say hey you're not being inclusive or you're whatever insult me by being inclusive that's on them that's nothing to do with me right exactly I agree Thank cool you. cool so kind of along those lines um, on the normal podcast we end the show by saying don't let your cape get caught in the door hold on one more time <laughs> sorry don't let your cape get caught in the door okay <laughs> Okay. Which has come to mean don't let your shortcomings or your foibles uh, keep you from reaching your goal. Okay. Is there any shortcomings that you've come over in your life to, to reach your goals? Any shortcomings I've come over to reach your goals? done it which is good um no not really i think i've grown a lot and i think that's more so what i focus on than say my shortcomings okay i think everything from my past i've used which right. is like had made me stronger and so i don't see it necessarily as shortcomings so, yeah. so i failed that question we can do a follow-up no okay. no 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 i actually really enjoy that answer because you 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 just look at everything as a positive. Well, yeah, that's how you grow. I mean, you, you grow from your from your weaknesses. You don't grow from your strengths. Yes, exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then um, the question that we normally wrap up on is, how do you measure success? Well, I come from business, so success is always measured by numbers. It's by data. Everything is very right. data driven. But there are things that you can't, and something I recently said, like that you can't measure. So little girl looking at a book like it doesn't matter whether the parent buys or not right that's fifteen dollars that's a number but like if she looks at it now she believes she can be a superhero i can't yes. measure that i can't measure her thinking now she can go save a girl from being whatever you know oppressed or she, now she can be a president now she can be anything in the world now because she sees herself as a hero that she can do it so that's something that i measure in my mind i you know just based on their smiles because i was saying it's not numerically you can't you can't right. get the, gather that data but like that's the difference that i've seen as a, on the comic con tables and just watching the kids and just adults as well but the kids more so is that like can i inspire them and that is what in my mind like what makes the difference and what matters <laughs> so where can people find the book so New York Comic Con right now, but otherwise latinasuperheroes.com is my website and there's a tab that says shop. And the mainstream is also Latina Superheroes. Okay. And then of course where can people find you on social media? Social media is on Instagram, Latina Superheroes, or my other page is my name, so Caden Phoenix. Okay, cool. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you for that, Caden. And again, yeah, check out check out her book, all her stuff, follow her on the socials. Tell her superhero speak sent you. You won't be disappointed. All right, John. I think we can bring this in for landing. So, of course, as always, I'm going to ask, you got any recommendations? Or did you learn Werewolf anything? Werewolf by Night. Werewolf by Night. <laughs> I, learned, I learned that Werewolf by Night is, like, way more awesome than anybody thought. And that and my recommendation is you should also find this out for yourself. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but like when you when you run across something that good, like it makes you happy, you know, like you're still around to see things like that, you know? Okay. Sometimes life is beautiful and, and then it punches you in the face, but you know. Sometimes, but, sometimes. Hmm. Okay. Well, I, I will recommend that you go to superheroespeak.com where you can find the podcast every week comic book reviews by someone soon we're working on on a replacement all the social media links at the top of the page news and rants by me of course there's the and review there is a review of snowblind up there go check that out and a wrap-up of comic-con 2022 so go check both those out on the website comment let us know what you think and yeah i'm going to recommend watch werewolf by night Make sure you're caught up on Sandman because those are the two main things we will talk about next week. Sorry, Kassan, I know you're waiting to hear 
us talk about Sandman, but of course, through through some circumstances, JD's not here and he is the big Sandman fan. So we can't do that without him. So all right. On that note, boys and girls, as always, thanks for listening. Don't let your cape get caught in the door. Have a good week.